Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I screen print small boxes for my home-based business. I've got these small 6x6x6 by six by six inch boxes that I use to put collectibles and stuff in that I sell in my Etsy in my home shop, and I've been having trouble screen printing them. I found quite a few videos online, you know, Cam from The Print Life, Lee Stewart, but their boxes seem to be bigger than their screens, so everything seems to work out well for them, but when I tried it, it didn't really work well. The problem I'm having is that the boxes are smaller than my 20 by 24 frames. So what happens is the box itself seems to push the screen up and when I print, I get these weird missing patches and smudges and stuff. It, there's areas of no contact versus full contact versus some off contact. So you can see here on the final box what's happened. There's a big missing spot down in the corner and everything looks like it's been smudged. Generally, I also think the mesh count was way too low at 110, so I'm going to change that to something higher and try again. My first thought is to build a custom wooden frame, a custom size, something that's small enough so that it can literally hold down the box and press it flat while I'm screen printing. This is just a 2x4 I've cut in half on my table saw, and then I've used that to make this frame with wood glue and screws. I've attached some 230 mesh to the back with staples and some glue. And I've made my own little scoop coater here. I'll put a link to that up in the corner so you can see how that's done. And then I got a small squeegee from Amazon for a few bucks. It's recommended to stir your emulsion. This should all be done in a light safe environment using some yellow safety lights. I'm just doing it here like this so you can see what's happening. It's difficult to film under those lights. I'm assuming you already know how to really expose screens. This isn't so much for how to create your own screens. It's more about the problems I've had overcoming when trying to print really small boxes. I'm using my mini scoop coater here to coat the outside of the screen first. That would be the shirt side. Then I'll flip it around and end over end and coat the inside last. Once that's done, I take my finger and just wipe down any thick edges. It'll take a really long time for them to dry. When you're done with this, you're going to want to save any unused emulsion back into the container. It's pretty expensive. The emulsion is water soluble, so you can just wash out your tools in a sink. This is my particular setup in my furnace room. On the bottom, I've got the screen drying unit that I built. It's got a couple of 12 volt computer fans into it that pulls in air from the back. Uh, this way, there's some baffles and stuff in there so that light can't get in, but there is some airflow. You can't put something wet into a locked box and expect it to dry. This is my washout booth with my homemade filtration unit, uh, an agricultural tub that I used for reclaiming screens. And then finally, the exposure unit and the drying booth. This is what everything looks like with the safety lights on. That's why it's difficult to film in here. Number one, the lighting is really low, but the color is really off. So when I shoot with a white balance set, things are going to look weird. Just so you know. Here I'm going to expose the screen. I put down a little piece of glass first just to give me a spacer because these frames don't sit really level. It's important that you get your um, film positive right up against the screen and there's no gap. Now I'm putting a little bit of glass in the back and I'm putting a cordless drill on that just for weight to sandwich them all together. Then I'm going to expose this for 90 seconds. That's how long it takes on my exposure unit. Once this is fully exposed, I put the frame in the sink and I just gently put a little bit of water on both the inside and the outside. I let that sit for 30 seconds and then I hit it with the high pressure nozzle. I don't use a pressure washer and you only clean this out from the outside, from the shirt side. Don't spray from both sides with the high pressure. When I'm done washing it out, I put it back onto the exposure unit for about five minutes or so just to post expose it and make sure that the emulsion is fully cured and fully hard. This is what the final screen looks like. 
Now I'm going to tape off the inside just to make sure that no ink gets into the cracks and crevices. Makes it easier to clean out when you're done. I'm using a water-based Green Galaxy black ink for this. You could use any color, that's the great thing about once you've made the stencil, uh, you could use, change your mind and decide to use blue or red or any color you like for your box art. Simply a matter of adding a little bit of ink and squeegeeing across on my box. And then going into high production. I made about 50 of these. When I'm done with them, I just throw them onto the floor. They turned out pretty good. The best part about this is if you're new to screen printing, you get to practice on something that doesn't really matter. I mean, no one's gonna care if your boxes are slightly smudged or the printing's not great because no one's buying cardboard boxes from you. My only complaint about this I guess I should have made the frame a little bit longer. It's a little problematic, a little tight on the left and right sides to get in with the squeegee to maintain that angle. So what I would do is extend the frame a little bit on the next one. And now, version two. So I've got other boxes I need to make as well. And instead of six by six by six, they're 10 by 10 by four. Something you could put a t-shirt into. So here I'm going to do something a little bit different. I made a longer frame this time, a much longer frame. These boxes are longer to begin with. And here I've put out some tape on a table. This I figure is going to help me align the frames with the boxes so that I don't have to think about it too much as I'm printing. I ended up putting this on my homemade one color screen printing press to see if I could make this work. The problem is that you can't really get to the point on the box you need to. So I thought, maybe I can modify the frame. So I decided to add a piece onto the frame here, just to make it stick out longer, rather than modifying the press. If you modify the press, you can't really use it for anything else, and I'm going to want to use it for other boxes and box shapes and sizes. Here I'm just adding some more Green Galaxy Black Ink, water-based. This is a 305 mesh, by the way. I put some tape on that palette so I know where to align the boxes. Flooding the screen here. You have to do that with water-based anchor. The ink will dry in the fine mesh. That one looks pretty good. Again, I'm just tossing them on the floor. And then I go into production. I make about 50 of these as well. Here's a close-up of the final product. Turned out pretty good. It's fairly sharp. It doesn't look smudged or weird in any way. If you don't want to waste good shirt ink on this, you could use literally anything. Just get yourself some black acrylic from a store. Here's a final box at 10 by 10 by 4. I printed one flat, one flat side, which is two sides, and then let it dry completely for about 20 minutes and then flipped it over and did the other side. And that's it. That's all I've got for you. Hopefully you've got some ideas from this, you can get inspired, and if you're having trouble making your own small boxes for your manufacturing home-based business, maybe this will help you out or give you some ideas of something you can do. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.